We're back here on Wallet Watch on Facebook Live, Investonomics. That's the page you're on. And uh, joining me now is uh, Vishakha Arun, who's the Managing Director and CEO at India First Life Insurance. She is going to talk about uh, what this budget means for your money, what can you do with your money, but also more importantly, as a thought leader, as a senior member of the corporate world, uh, how she views this budget from the point of view of it impacting all of us at a much more, uh, at a level perhaps higher than just our pocket. But uh, Vishaka, thanks very much for coming by. And uh, my first question to you, while there were these exemptions that he's talked about, sorry, not exemptions, the, you know, the cut in the tax uh, for a particular slab which has a cascading effect, so 12,500 is what uh, you stand to benefit if you're above 5 lakh. Uh, there wasn't really anything other than that for insurance specifically, except this one point about TDS for insurance agents, which is 5%, he's exempted that. Uh, are you disappointed? Did you feel that for a country which is so heavily underinsured and where we need to only give more incentives for people to actually get a cover for themselves, both on health and life, uh, he could have done a bit more? I think it's human nature to expect more, right? So I think <laughs> let's let's start with that disclaimer. But having said which, um, I, there was recent news which said that uh, uh, he might be, you know, there might be something in the budget on the Prime Minister even Jyoti Bhima Yojana and Jan Suraksha, given that we've got uh, three core customers who are already uh, covered. So if you look at it from the larger scope of things and you look at it as a percentage of the Jandan Yojana accounts, then the percentage is in the low. Uh, double digits mm. and um, you're saying those who have a bank account and, and an account. insurance uh, policy offered by the company that's, right. that's very small. that's very low yeah it's very uh, low it, it's in it's in about 10 to 15 percent mm. um, so one of the things that so there was a there was an article in the newspaper which said that uh, the government may actually subsidize it mm. so mm. i don't think that subsidizing was a great idea i i i really did have um, great respect for the product that was brought out. Mm. I really did think, however, that the way they made a mention of crop insurance mm. going up from, for, targeted to go up from 40% to 50%, mm. I was expecting some kind of a target in terms of the Jandan Yojana accounts mm. having a Jeevan Jyoti and mm. going up from an X percentage to a Y percentage. I did hope that some kind of a target like that would come in, um, considering all the should I say the precursors that mm. came before this budget? Mm. So that is one. Uh, so you know, I mean, if, if you, uh, since I have a platform to voice my views, I do believe that life insurance, at least a basic level, should be made mandatory. Mm. You know, I don't think uh, personal risk management of all of us is anything great. Mm. You know, but, so I, I just believe that we take a third party which is mandatory, which is a scooter, which is damage caused to others. But I think not on our own life. Mandatory for our own life. In fact, on the health side as well, that perhaps at least uh, you know increase that limit. Healthcare costs have been going up, uh, or incentivize people to take. You know, I, though he did something in the last budget, yeah. he did increase it from fifteen thousand to twenty-five thousand. But uh, again, that part was missing. So somewhere did you get a sense that a very critical uh, part of all our lives, which is to protect yourself, uh, was somewhere not there in this budget? No, I, I think the health is. A decent 25,000 does get you a decent uh, health cover, so I think uh, that aspect is is fine. Um, perhaps there was one more clarification that I was looking for. Is you know if you remember the NPS mm -hmm. went up to about 50,000 limit. Uh, there is an NPS tier too, mm -hmm. you know where we still where there's still ambiguity in terms of uh, the taxation. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be treated as a mutual fund or will it be treated as an NPS fund? So we'll have to look into the details of the budget to see if there's any cover on that aspect. Otherwise, NPS tier 2 is something that's uh, we're still not clear mm. how it's being treated. Mm. Uh, what kind of tax regime will it attract? Mm. So I think that that's one more clarity in the budget that uh, I would look for. He, he has given, uh, as I mentioned, uh, some more money, not too much, but 12,500 uh, to most young people especially. Uh, and I think that again, coming back to uh, you know, we always say as people from the financial planning point of view that you should be certainly looking at getting yourself a good cover at a young age, provided of course you have dependents uh, or you know a health cover for sure. 
Uh, do you think that this uh, saving that a person is going to get uh, should also be considered as getting yourself adequately insured? Absolutely. I think, you know, straight away people need to realize that they've got that extra money in hand. And uh, the, uh, that amount of 12,500 can buy an average age of about 30, 35, 50 lakh cover. So, you know, when you get that extra money, there are two things you do with it, right? You spend it or you save it. Mm. So, I'm saying that, you know, spend it mm. in in buying yourself a cover. Mm. So, I said, yes, please do. <laughs> so, don't save it because mm. I think saving is anathema mm. to youngsters these days. Mm. So, but uh, I'm saying go ahead, go ahead and buy a risk cover for yourself. Mm. And uh, also, if you just uh, look at the focus in terms of a general life insurance uh, policy premium, uh, if I was to include uh, LIC into calculation of that average, it is about 10,000 rupees. So this can actually subs this can actually provide for an annual premium on a policy, whether it is a term insurance for a 50 lakh or a, a smaller long-term savings uh, amount. But I think uh, it should be used wisely. I, I would say that that's uh, an advice. Do, do, do you think this advice. budget was very workmanlike? Uh, you know, he identified, uh, you know, 10 themes which none of us would disagree with, it was all in the right direction, we all know that these are the things which are needed for this country to uh, progress. There were no shocks as such, there was a lot of talk around capital gains tax might come, uh, corporate tax, while you know from the value point of view the bigger companies are, you know, there's no change, but a large number of you know, the smaller and medium enterprises, their tax rate is coming down. Uh, do you think there is enough in this budget to boost entrepreneurship? Uh, and I'm asking this because a lot of young people are watching uh, in our programming. So you've talked about that you're getting a benefit if you are in your first job or in your second job. That's where you know, you're in that 5 lakh to 10 or 15 lakh kind of range. Uh, but if you were looking at turning into entrepreneurs from, again, a corporate point of view, not talking insurance anymore, but do, do, you, do you see that vision statement coming out? I think MSME is definitely uh something that's been impacted by, uh, positively. Um, and at the risk of sounding a bit um, uh, cynical, you know, there was also a preamble to that which said that not too many MSMEs pay taxes. Mm. So, you know, so you're reducing the tax lab on uh, on a sector which is not paying taxes. So, mm. that, but just to get that out of the way, you know, it was bothering me that uh, is there any benefit that you can see immediately? No. Entrepreneurship, I don't think, is really related to this, mm. honestly, because mm. I don't think the barrier to entrepreneurship was a 30% tax lab. Mm. I, I, and I think entrepreneurship has always been encouraged. Mm. Uh, and uh, what I do believe that encourages entrepreneurship mm. is the clarity in uh, focus. Mm. And the clarity that we will focus on rural, the clarity that we will focus on digital, mm. the clarity that we will focus on infrastructure, while the infrastructure is play a major role. But just these two aspects of digital and rural. Mm. You know, the reason I say it, and I love me to permit slip in a little bit of what we're doing at uh, our company, is the reason I say it is to be able to reach out to rural. Mm. You know that I've always been focused on the micro and the, you know, the, the strategy there has always been to benefit that segment of customers. But the reason why nobody can reach out to that segment is because it's expensive to reach out to them. Mm. You know, the, a simple collection mechanism can be expensive. So when you combine rural and digital, it's phenomenal opportunity for growth. You know, there's no collection mechanism, there's no scrutiny, there's no recall, there's no transactions in banking, you don't need any you don't need any of that paraphernalia. Mm. And you use digital modes and you reach out. So your market mm. can be huge. Mm. And if rural is growing and that's where you're having um, income even from the Narega or or a reduction in tax lab which will actually make a substantial difference in the rural and urban areas. Mm. Combine that with digital and you suddenly have magic formula there. So mm. I think those are the factors mm. which really impact entrepreneurship and I would say everybody should be able to do it. Today I should be able to manufacture something mm. in my own house and put it up for sale on a web mm. and anybody should be able to buy it. Mm. You know, and cash is easy, the delivery is easy. Mm. So I think it's, it's a fantastic place to be and to be an entrepreneur. Uh, we've got some questions coming in as well uh, for you, Vishakha. This is Nikita writing in saying, what kind of tax benefits uh, will getting an insurance grant me now? So pretty much no difference from the past, but do you want to articulate on what are the tax benefits coming to you? Yeah, so I think the ATC limit is anyway continuing, so there has been no increase in any separate limit. So under the ATC limit, the entire premium that you pay is uh, tax-free, so I think 
and that continues. Uh, the other uh, benefit in insurance, which is again continuing, but uh, for the sake of clarity, is that the proceeds on an insurance policy are tax free. Mm -hmm. So that's been uh, uh, that's been the incentive to save for the long term and to have systematic saving. Mm -hmm. You know, because in an insurance policy, uh, a minimum lock-in period is five years, and you have a uh, insurance cover. So it forces you to actually plan for the two contingencies in life, as we call it, which is dying too early or living too long. And when you take a long-term policy, the, your incentive has to do it because the returns then can be tax-free. Uh, so it's, it's so that, that's really the benefit. Uh, Shane has a question as well. How do I go about choosing the right one from the various insurance providers? Okay, I think that's a bit unfair <laughs> to you to pose that question to you. But I think, um, to be fair and to be you know, to answer his question, I think there are several uh, platforms which are available and you should also look at the track record, you should look at the ownership, uh, who is the person providing you because this is a policy you buy as you said for 15, 20, 25 Absolutely. years and you don't want a situation where you go buy a policy and when you need it, when you need the money, the company is gone because it's such a long term contract. I, I, I am going to be uh, neutral and I'll step yes. back and talk on yes. behalf of the industry. and. Uh, the two things I really have to clarify that is none of the life insurance companies today can really work out like that. Mm. You know, the, the basic difference is none of the policies have something called a call option. Mm. So the that's the basic difference between life insurance and other kinds of investment is that if we underwrite a case and if I commit to insure you for the next 20 years mm. and I commit to pay you a certain amount, I don't have, we as an insurance industry do not have a call option of terminating it midway and saying, take your money back. We can't do that. If an insurance company wants to leave the country, it actually needs to find a buyer and sell it to them. So who will the, then honor the contract? Who will then honor the contracts? Uh, it was very interesting, but uh, when we look, when we when I started off in 2001, in the life insurance space, we had clients who were uh, there pre-nationalization. You know, So those were the contracts that were being honored in the country uh, too. So th there is there is really so a regulation. Just get up and go off. Yeah. So the policy okay. holder protection act and IID is taken good care. Okay. So it's not about that. What uh, what you really need to uh, look into is the type of policy you buy. Mm. And if we you know are agreed that the audience we're looking at is primarily young, I would say go in for a term plan. Just simple protection. I mean whatever is the expected income that you intend to generate over the next 15 to 20 years. Just take that much of insurance. Mm. And I think that's that's a first step. Mm. And then if you're looking at savings, then you'll have to start looking at it and say, how savvy are you? Mm. If you're really financially savvy and you know how to manage your mutual funds, then stick to a, a, a mutual fund or an NPS type 2. NPS type 2 is a brilliant form of investment. Mm. Stick to a term from life insurance. However, if you're the kind of a person who says, look, I don't have a clue, I don't want to be managing, all said and done, money in the markets is notional until realized. Mm. Then I would suggest you have to sit down and decide mm. whether you're willing to compromise on your returns mm. so that somebody else is going to manage your money and make sure that your money is safe. Mm. But there's a certain amount of compromise on returns when you outsource. This is just the nature of things. Right. There's one more question from Tejasvi. What is the ideal amount of insurance uh, that I should be taking? Yeah, I think I just said, whatever is the expected income that you you would be generating over your lifetime. Mm. So, as a very, very, um, you know, thumb rule, mm. so if you're about um, 30 years old, mm. then you take about 15 years of your annual income, or 15 to 20 years of your current annual income mm. as a measure. Okay. That's the life insurance cover you should be buying. Mm. The intention of a term plan is to ensure that when you're not around, your family actually gets the benefit of the income that you would have generated had you been around. That's it. So you just assess what is the disposable income you would have given to your family had you been around and take a cover for that. There's also a question on uh, the Aadhaar based smart card. I don't know if you want to take that. That, uh, would it, would, that. that would contain health details of senior citizens. Is that a good move? I think it's that? brilliant, yeah. right? I mean, con considering that a, a senior citizen by by any data, mm. is more uh, susceptible mm. to a health problem. Mm. Now, if you have a card which actually is giving you mm. details of his allergy, his symptoms, mm. prior history, treatment can be so much more effective because mm. you know, he's not going to be able to 
tell you what his problem is when it's not well. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's a, it's a. Do you think somewhere this gives us scope for innovation with life insurance, I, especially I, for critical illness, where if somebody has this record, uh, you probably would be able to consider products for people who are older. We could. I think it's at least pro, uh, Throws it open an promotes some thought into seeing it because typically we kind of fight yeah. shy of insuring people mm. who are older, right, because of the risks associated. But yeah, this is something that. Uh, there's also a question from Akshat uh, Rane. He says, how does the budget affect the health insurance plan of my elderly parents? Unfortunately, no changes there. It's pretty much the same limit. It's, uh, it's pretty good. The existing limit of 25,000, so you continue with Plus that. Plus, there is an extra limit, limit for parents. parents, so you're saying that that's pretty much fine. Thank you so much, Vishaka, for coming by, taking questions Pleasure. of our viewers, and wish you all the very best. Thank, Thank you. you. Pleasure being here.